hunger and thirst for God. I don't know if each and every one of you was here, but I'm going to do a little bit of recapping and then we'll continue. Uh, we uh, talked about hunger and thirst for God. And we said that to hunger is to have a strong desire or craving for something. It's a feeling of discomfort or weakness caused by lack of food coupled with the desire to eat. And it is that persistent ache on the inside of you, that sense of need that is not content until it is filled. In short, when you are hungry, it's not going to go away until you take care of it. And uh, we read from the book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 6 that says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. And before I embark, I embark on the word of God, I'm going to quiz you a little bit. And I would like you to give me some few sayings. I don't know if I should call them proverbs or what that talks about food in our native language. And the first one is Ngaragude Hoyagohoro. Keep going. Ngaragude Hoyagohoro. Give me another one. Yeah? Kai, kamu ali giru ona ge ko moana moega. Haiya, gomaya ngaragu. Eko magu na irio. No kai mani mo ali giru ona yo horo. Ge kige dogu ne mo gotika na kio. Eh? And another one. Let's keep going. Ngaragu de hoya gu horo. Moana moega no da. Gomaya irio eko ma gomaya ngaragu eko magu na ke. Na hara ige, niye ni dona ni mwari giru wa niyo horo, lakini ni tawasamehe. Hati ya geta kuma idhano kothie na igoro. And if you see us coming up with those sayings, that means uh, when somebody is hungry, they really need to be attended. And now, I was thinking about the way we have so many sayings about now catering about our berry. And I was asking myself, how about the inner man? How about we have a bunch of sayings about thirsting and hungering for the word of God? And you know, uh, for sure, if I come to your house and I am hungry, and, and there's another one that says, Oruhare umaga nada. Sindio, Oruhare umaga ke nada. So, the moment we feel even our spiritual hunger, we feed the spiritual hunger that we have, that God feeds us. We are going to be warm, we are going to be strong. Sindio, I don't know whether you have tried to sleep when you are hungry. I have tried. Sometimes, especially when I'm fasting, I get, I don't know for some reason, and I find myself turning the heat on even if it's summer. Why? Because you don't have, the, there's nothing to generate heat in your body. So you find yourself getting cold. And I was asking myself, do I have the same feeling when it comes to matters of God? And so, uh, I can tell you that people will admit when they are hungry, like when you are hungry, they will tell you, hey, how about you hunger the same, you have the same same hunger for God and you say that I can do anything so that I can be filled. So when we come to matters of life, we are very good at admitting. When you come to my house and, and I ask you, what do you want me to give you? Would, would you like some tea? Would you like some juice? Would you like soda? You know, you tell me what you want. Because you don't have to think about it. You know about it. And I am, I am calling upon you today that the very same way that you are able to acknowledge that you are hungry, that you need something to eat, that you need something to fill your belly. 
that have the very same hunger when we go before God. It is high time that we tell God that we hunger for you and we need you. It's high time the way we are not ashamed when we are hungry because I know if you come to my house and you are hungry and I ask you if, if I can offer you something, you will not even think about it. Leave around that. When we are done with the service, I know when we have snacks there, because there is that urge. And it can only go away when we eat. So the hunger for God can only go away when God fills us. And the word of God is saying, that blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Unless you tell God that you are hungry, unless you admit before God that you are hunger and you thirst for his word, he is not going to feed you. So it starts with us. We have to go before God and tell God, Father, we need you. We need you to fear us. We need you to quench our thirst. Unless we go before God and acknowledge and admit, there is no way that we are going to be filled. So it starts with us. We have to hunger for God in order for God to fill us. You know, this scripture has a reward. It says that God will reward those who hunger and thirst for him, for righteousness. And the way he will do it, he will fill you. And when God fills you, he fills you enough. He fills you in a way that you are not going to hunger for the things that are not for righteousness. And that is why we are able, when we are filled by God, when we hunger for righteousness and God fills us, he takes away that desire for sinning. He takes away that desire of self, being selfish. And we become people who are filled with God. I want to tell you today that we can do everything that the world does. When it comes to singing those naughty songs, we have the mouth, we have the bodies, we can sing, we can dance, we can do anything. When it, is, it comes to the matter of cursing people, we have the mouth, we, we have the tongue. We can still like the wildly people. But when God fills us, we don't have the desire to, for the things that are not of righteousness. And that is how you can tell the difference of a person who is filled by God and a person who is hungry. A person who does not have that in fearing from God. We always act different. But when God fills us, he is able to satisfy us. Such that even if I feel what you've done to me, I have a right to tell you something. I have a right to fight back. I have a right to cast you back. But because I am filled by God, I am not going to, be, to do an act of unrighteousness. So, we also said that the people of this world hunger for food, they hunger for riches, they hunger for fame, power, control, long life, comfort, and many other things. And the thing is, the people of the world can never have enough. Even those that are rich, even today, if my place of work tells me, hey, we would like to upgrade your salary. I cannot go there and tell them, hey, and if there is anybody of you that can do that, let me see you raise your hand. How comes they can only evaluate us after one year? And then you add me some sense. Go get a water to Ruru and go get a one at door. Sindio. Because we hunger for more. If they can tell me I am going to increase your salary with ten dollars, mono re gyoka, I guess I de e gyoka, I would be dancing and I would be celebrating. The ton dry wahena kaurugare ga ke, kamohuko. Sindio. How about the things of God? 
Can we have that hunger and tell God that, Father, I cannot have enough of you. I need you. No matter what level I am in life, I can never have enough of you. I need to hunger for you. I need to follow you. I need to seek you more than before. Amen. But I hope we are together. Amen? Amen. Now, let's go to the next reading. We are going to read from the book of 2 Peter, chapter 2, verse 2. The book of 2 Peter, chapter 2, verse 2. I'm sorry, First Peter, First Peter, chapter 2, verse 2. And the word of God says, like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk. So that by it you may grow up in your salvation. I'm going to repeat again. Like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk. So that by it you may grow up in your salvation. Uh, when children are born... And we expect for them to grow. They have to get that milk from, their, from the mother. And it becomes a big deal if the mother is not able to, breast, to breastfeed the baby because the baby is not able to grow. I know there are some alternatives here and there, but I for sure... Uh, the mother's breast milk is the best that can be fed to a newborn. And when we are born again and we enter into the kingdom of God, the same way that that newborn baby needs that milk, the word of God is telling us that we should crave pure spiritual milk. So that, uh, my version says, like newborn babies long for the pure milk of the word, so that by it you may grow in respect of salvation. So, when we come to Christ, we are supposed to crave for that word of God, that the spiritual milk that we have. And when we crave for the pure word of God, it helps it helps us to grow in respect of salvation. Or it help, helps us to grow in our salvation. The only way that we can grow and not stagnate in one point is by being fed by the word of God. And for you to be fed by the word of God, you have to long for it. The word of God is saying, long for the pure milk of the word. So in order for God to fill you, God cannot come and force his word on you. It is for you to make a decision in your heart and say that you are going to long for that pure milk of the word of God. And as we long for the word of God and we are fed by the word of God, we are able to grow in respect of salvation. That we are able to grow in salvation. I know, and I always give this example, there is no mother that would love to see their children stagnating in one stage of life. And I know the moment a baby takes the first step. 
I have seen it. You see even the parents cheering and clapping their hands and they are like, wow, nega kinyoki yare moe. Sindio, it's a big deal. Just taking one step, it is celebrated. When you hear that baby uttering some words saying mama or something, you are like, thank you God. How about us? When we grow spiritually, how does God see it? How does the heavens rejoice? But remember, you have to long. God is not coming to force you his word in you. He is not coming to force you to grow. It is for you to make a decision and to have that hunger and to long for the word of God and also to grow in salvation. If we are happy when we grow in the matters, physical matters, here I hear most of the parents say, saying at a I'm waiting for them to turn 18 to a horane. Sindio, the kids to turn 18, mohorane. Todo mudo ni agya kifadi, na ni kamaria magi, ne na gali, na noe 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 kete noe ikali. But how can a parent feel when you are staying with a son or a daughter who is 30 years na materiali gidiya? Ona hau neho haba geriria, maba geriria wosoko dhana, eka imo dotare li gidi ya kareke. When they look at you and you have turned 25 and you are not even thinking about getting married, oigua asi ya imaji ya wosoko dha, eo kade hera modori. Oka hora, why? They, are not, they don't have anything bad at heart. But they want to see you grow and start your own family and advance in life. Amen? But I want to thank God that if a parent would love to see their children grow from one level of life to another, how about our God? We also need to be, to, to be growing in salvation. We cannot stagnate in one place, just make one step and we are done. We have to continue growing every day. I know as years advance, we grow in years, right? You don't know how to get to get to the fourth two. If you're a root to it, ne jubiri ra to a call. Jubiri ra de call. It's beckoning me. Jubiri kora we hano guru nani muraki or na. Eh? And I'm not only growing in years. Digit we kaga kuoka de doi mirena kokanya desira yene kosa de best. And I'm here. I see you. That is the only one that I got. Oh, I don't make Korea. Oh, na Kerry. Si a Kenya itiga ki muetare to. Hmm. Taru to mu adon kira na tu ede iraga debere. I don't know. It was just if it was just me. Natura to toge don ki tena tu. Natura. Natura ire geto te. I threw them away. I thought it was a white one. No, no, that's the amangoro. Kira tu ke uki aga sete. Mama ka kani na ukona waro na disai ni ge ukona guy. Dage keni re mu gete. Why? Because I want to grow. The murana kana nezo na inyosi anyu ona moketa gina na ke ogomu. And. It is good to grow. And please, when you see people coming from Kenya, advise them what to bring and what not to bring. Matiga ko yihori yitha adoko leu na gabe jita ako kako kotweka accepted in this first world. Na geta uro ke hodago leta kia mutuba. Gyo kana kio kena na kia yihori yitha yitha adoko. Please be talking to people. When you grow and move to the next step, help others grow too. Amen. Tika kwa kado mokai na matauru mau mage kwa bago kwa America na nmo matauru nisiho idego ko honestly. You have grown. Help somebody else grow. Amen. 
inyue the kaitu inyue mwarega ga imutia na 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 taicio i i siwe gwe nu mekuja niki waona ga totigere hau so we have to desire to to grow we have to desire like that newborn the way they are fed and they get big and they grow they start walking they start talking and then then the next minute they are in school the next minute they are calling us for graduations how about god okage graduation shito the way we have grown spiritually and i pray that we are not going to stag to stagnate the only way that we can grow is hungering for god because i cannot come and force food down your throat god cannot do the same thing if you are hungry it is your it is your decision to go in the fridge get some food and eat i don't know whether you have sometimes those of us who work in in health facilities and you are trying sometimes to give some drugs and somebody is not cooperating huh dimoyo ria hokagai tondu darenda ona wasiikira situa goko ona ria kuhurujukira othi ona mask ni njega riu twina mask uga cigatuo ciga 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 kuhurujukira othi kana kana mundu ikitio no take it yourself uko mwikate so if god is trying to help you grow no rera guy no take it yourself uhano otasio demona doraga gadek Koiga it's not meant for me kagakwira I don't care nagakoiga si ugo ingekwasa you understand how people talk here maybe is that the same way the same attitude we have with God when God is trying to help us grow and we are telling him you can take it to yourself and you don't pay attention may God help us the other reading that we are going to read is the book of Psalms 63 verse 1 to 2 Psalms 63 verse 1 to 2 and the word of God says uh, this is a psalm of David when he was in the desert of Judah you God are my God honestly I seek you I thirst for you my whole being longs for you in a dry and a parched land where there is no water You know uh and I know that God will give me a chance to share another topic on can God testify about you. We know God himself testified about David and he said that I have found a man after my own heart. And you see the first verse says about how he longed for God. And then the second one says, I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory. So, David spoke to God and said, "Oh God, you are my God. I will seek you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and a thirsty land where there is no water so i have looked for you in your sanctuary to see your power and your glory the reason as to why david was a man after god's own heart it is because for one thing he said i will seek you it is upon you to make a decision or by yourself to seek god david made a decision and said i will seek you in order for god to fill you you must seek him and you do not have to wait until we say hey church we are going to be praying and fasting we are going to be meeting for prayer you have to seek god in your own closet in your own time make sure as an individual that you are seeking god and that is the only way that god can feed you the other thing david said that he was longing for god in order for god to feed you you must long for him if you are not longing for god he cannot force himself to you 
When you are longing for somebody, you take a phone and call them. You pay them a visit. You check on them. When we long for our parents, we call them and we have a word with them. So for you, when you long for God, you will take a step of seeking God. We have to long for him. And the other thing that David said, so I have looked for you in your sanctuary. You have to look for God. If you are not opening your eyes and looking your spiritual eyes, you have to seek God. You have to long for him. You have to look for him. And the other thing that he said, to see your power and your glory. You are not going to see God's power and his glory until you choose to seek him. Until you long for him. I give this example so many. I think I've given this example. When I got born again, I was young. And the neighbors never believed that young teenagers can get born again. And whenever we went for prayers and I could, I could see people pray and cry to God and I was asking myself, hmm? But little did I know that these people are humbling before God and they are seeking God. And I could hear them speak in tongues. And then when I got to high school, we used to have this wicked charade. We used to have see you and we would have uh, people from outside come and share the word of God. And every time they came, they asked for everybody who had a prayer item. I was the first one to go there. And they would ask me, what do you need? Nani Goiga. Holy Spirit. Naka hide mwera da ho eiruo. Niliombewa, nikaombewa. Do you think I received? No. It never happened. Magi ho ero hakuhe gie kihara motoe. And some of them that were coming there, they were coming to look for girls. No gato ara motoe wa kuhau. Na modosi ona dokiri akohujeri okira gwetha toiretu. Uisoka ko iguale. But those are the people that I trusted that they can pray for me to be filled with the Holy Spirit. One time I heard the word of God. And when I heard the word of God, I remember I'm the one who invited that speaker in our school. And when that man came, he delivered the word of God with power. And he said one thing. You have been longing to be filled of the Holy Spirit. You have been longing to, op to operate in the gifts of God. But unless you yourself, you go to God and tell God and humble and seek God, it will never happen. When he said that, I said to myself, I've heard the word of God. And I don't know whether other people took action, but I said, God, I'm not eating until you fill me with your Holy Spirit. The word of God says that you are the one that fills us with your spirit. It doesn't say that I have to be prayed for. It's God who does it. And you know what? I, we, uh, we were four of us and we went uh, in the forest and started praying. We prayed and I had one of my sister, I knew her and I was like, she is speaking something that I don't understand. And I, I kept quiet. And the other sister that was speaking in tongues said, don't keep quiet. Don't listen to her. Keep on praying. Sometimes we need people to encourage us, to charge us, to continue. We need people to help us to go to, to, an, to the next step. And when she said that, I continued praying. And I felt the power of God come upon me like in a mighty way. I felt it. I felt the power of God upon me. And when the power of God came upon me, 
I am telling you from ranch time, midday, until Iradhi Igedira, na Gogedio games, I was still there praying and speaking in tongues. I was praying, I was singing, I was worshiping, and I tried to stop, I could not stop. And I said to myself, so, it's not that God cannot do it. But if you don't seek God, God cannot force you. I'm telling you, God will never come and force you to operate in any gifts of the spirit if you are not seeking. And sometimes we despise the power of God because we have seen people who claim to have the power of God, but they behave otherwise. May I tell you that we have one person that we can look up to that cannot make you feel like you despise God and that is Jesus. If I don't set a good example, don't look at me, look at Jesus. Amen? Tordo ni toki nya hado kaiwa do makiuga ona thio misiri maragia ciake na niguo marumanire. Can I tell you that God's gift is and calling have no repentance. And if you want to, if you don't want to believe, think about Samson. That man used to go in a prostitute's house. Age to akero Samson we mukore. Ago ake no goro guo. Ada the anointing. No ima kwa mo maraya. Ake no goro guo. Akarokia gate with pillars. Ada the anointing of God. Akabati akere maini. Ado magio gire. Hey, na gaga iwa Samsoni. Aruta gavera wega ado madaria. But how did Samson die? He died a miserable death. Why? He had the anointing, but he misbehaved under the anointing. I want to tell you that we are going to see a lot of people misbehaving under the anointing. But do not be offended. Look unto God. God will never offend you. Guide to Kanagia. I want to tell you that day I spoke in tongues, I sang, I prayed, I worshipped. Until they had to wait for me. Like, mona mo ke diga ke da kaine mo diye. Idwo the iradi siya wa ine zuti zuti adomire. Atu kusama. And me when I see people joking around the spirit about the spirit of God, I feel the pain because I know I fasted for three good days and I was a student. Manama na no yori aruto me de te Korea. I did not eat for three days. I did not drink. God, I'm not eating anything. You have to fill me with your power. You have to fill me with your Holy Spirit. And I can tell you, there is power. I remember one time my brother was sick. And I used to carry him to hospital. He used to have um, asthma. And according to the doctors and whoever does the research, they say that asthma... Can I wear the coupon? So you have to maintain it. And my brother had asthma. And I used, he was, a, he was, I mean, a big baby and was, he had some weight. And I used to carry him to hospital whenever he got sick. And one time he got sick and it was serious. I looked at him and I saw, my God, I was like, he is going to die. This boy is not breathing. He's just there struggling. And I held him on my hands. I was with my mother. I, the pain that I felt and I was like, God, how long am I going to carry my brother to hospital? I held him with my hands and I prayed a prayer. I spoke in very deep tongues and I prayed to God about it. And my mother looked at me and said, I've never heard you speak such words. And can I tell you that from that day, my brother was totally healed from asthma. You know why? Because you are interceding in a language that even the devil cannot understand. Whatever I said personally, I did not understand. But God understood. And what he did, he healed my brother.
So let us hunger for God. Let us hunger for the power of God. That when we meet here, we worship full of the power of God. Not to no, we need the power of God among us. That when we see, we start praying, oh my goodness, even the devils in St. Louis can tell that there are people of God here that are worshipping God. It is another time that we need to go to the next step. We need to grow spiritually. We need to ask God to use us. Not a walk out to at it to go hurry on rain at the air on a mother may know what's your name of the life. No, that is not what God has called us for. He wants us to grow. He wants us to go to the next step. Then it is only going to happen when we hunger for God. God cannot shuffle down his power down our throat. The same way I cannot force you to eat. God cannot force you. You have to long. You have to seek him. You have to, you know, you have to look for God. No. When we are here, we are here. I am going to pray. I am going to seek God. And when we come here after seeking God, we are different people. We are going to experience God's power. We are going to experience God's deliverance. We are going to experience his move. No, 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 The word of God says, he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. So these are the words that were said by Jesus himself. And he said, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. The catch is to him who thirsts. It is freely. You are not charged. You don't need to come with money for you to receive from God. I don't know where this doctrine came from. That you have to come with this amount of money for, you, for God to attend to this kind of a problem. The word of God is saying, I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely. It's not just water, fountain of water of life, freely, no cost at all, to him who thirsts. The question is, do you thirst? God, the, Jesus said, I am the beginning and the end. It is done. I want to tell you that Jesus already completed his work. And now it is for you to thirst. And if you thirst for the word of God, the word of God says God will give a fountain. He's not going to give you just a cup. He's going to give you a fountain. And you know a fountain will not dry. It keep, keeps on, you know, producing water. It keeps on giving out water. So when you thirst for God, he doesn't give you with measure. He doesn't restrict. He will give you in abundance. And he will give you a fountain of water of life. And again, he is giving you freely. You don't have to come with some dollars here. You don't have to come with a check for you to receive that fountain of water. And then the other thing, you have to thirst. I'm asking, do you thirst for God? God wants to give you freely, but you have to thirst. 
And we say quite well, Narahude Hoya go horror. Urugare Umaganada. Eh, Mwana Mwana Mwagare, no da. We have so many, when it comes to the physical things, how about the things of God? Today, I am calling upon you. Let us thirst for God. Let us long for him. Let us seek him. And you know what? It doesn't matter what you have or what you have achieved. Because sometimes when we go to another level, we are like, uh, I, I'm not struggling on what to eat. I'm not struggling on how to pay the rent. Mahoya mai gene maake. Reu osyo ni modo okinyete. Ni modo iganeti ye gai. Nake, you'll never see change in your life. But when you go to God and humble. And call upon him. And seek him. And long for him. And tell him that you need him. Tell him that you long for him. You long for his power. He is going to do it. Amen. Not ikoli gere liyo. It is upon you. You have to make a decision. You have to thirst. You have to hunger. And God is promising that he's going to feed us. Amen. Amen. I can see our time is gone. I'm going to request the priest team. Please come over. And I believe that I've, I've communicated the way God wanted me to. And it is for us to take a step. It is for us to take a step. It is for us to thirst for God and tell God we don't want to be ordinary people. We want to be people who are full of your power, Lord. We want to be people that desire to see your glory, like what David said, that he longed for God's power and glory. And so he sought God. It is time for us to seek God. It's time for us to call upon the name of the Lord. And to desire for God to fear us. And yes, he is going to do it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.